Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this Marching Cubes project. Now, if you're interested in how to use expressions to create this sort of animation rig, I think you're going to get a lot out of this tutorial. Let's get started. OK, so here we are in Resolve. I'm going to right click to make a new Fusion composition. I want to make this 10 seconds long. Uh, let's call it Marching Cubes. And frame rate of 24 is good, so let's hit create and let's, let's double click to open it up. OK, so the first thing we obviously want to do is make a cube, so a 3D shape. Let's switch the shape type to cube. Let's take a look at that. Let's turn on 3D options lighting. Let's come to material and just make it yellow like this. And let's just temporarily move it up 0.5 on Y, so it's sitting on the floor like that just to get us started. And then let's also add another 3D shape. And that's created a nice merge for us. We'll have a plane for this. We'll set the X rotation to negative 90 and this scale. Let's go for something like 100. Let's look at that 3D merge. And let's just darken down the floor. Something like that. OK, so I'm just going to quickly rename those. So cube and floor. So the issue we have with creating a rolling cube is that we need to shift the pivot point with every 90 degree rotation. So for the first 90 degrees, we need the pivot point to be at 0.5 on X and negative 0.5 on Y. And then if we roll it on Z, you can see it's rolling about that corner. But by the time we get to here, that pivot point is no longer good for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a control node that is going to drive the whole thing. I'm just going to create a transform node. I'm going to call it XF just to make life simpler. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this size control for the pivot offset and the angle control for the rotation. So I'm going to add an expression to the angle and it's going to be time times five. So that's going to give us our rotation. For the size, I'm going to enter another expression and this is going to be open brackets angle divided by 360 close brackets modulo one. So modulo is the percentage sign as you can see modulo one. So what are we doing there? Basically, but by dividing the angle by 360, we've normalized it to the zero to one range and the modulo will look at the value that we've got. And as soon as we hit a value of one, it'll snap back to zero. You can probably see that as I go through that point there, we're snapping back to zero and that'll do that over and over again like that. So that cycle is what we can now link to if we come back to our cube. Let's first of all just do the simple thing, which is to link up the Z rotation. So let's add an expression there and let's type XF dot angle. And we want to actually go the other way. So times negative one. So that is going to create that sort of rotation that's going to drive it left to right. That's why we went negative one. Otherwise, we'd have been going the opposite direction. So the tricky bit is that we need to link up the X and Y pivots and we'll also need to link up the X and Y translation. So let's start with the simplest. Let's pick the X and add an expression. And I'm going to type the following. So if, and that's double IF, open brackets, XF dot size, which if you remember is our offset value, is less than 0.5 comma 0.5 comma negative 0.5. So basically that's saying that if the offset value is less than 0.5, return 0.5 for this X pivot value, otherwise return negative 0.5. So it's not going to look great, but at least the X pivot is moving. Let's now turn our attention to the Y pivot. So again, we're going to add an expression. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. So again, we're going to start with if double IF open brackets XF dot size is less than 0.25 comma negative 0.5 comma and then we're going to actually nest another conditional so double if open brackets xf dot size is greater than or equal to 0.75 comma negative 0.5 comma 0.5 close brackets close brackets that's all quite a mouthful but that is actually now going to move the y pivot but as you can see, something weird is happening with the 
translation. Now we've moved those pivots. So what we need to do is we need to add some expressions to the X and Y translations. I'm going to start with the easier one, which is the Y. Add an expression there, and I'm going to pick whip the Y pivot. And I just want to invert it, so I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. And that's starting to look a little bit better, at least we're staying more or less on the floor. Now let's also add an expression to the X translation. So add an expression there, and pick whip the X pivot. So again, we want to multiply it by minus 1. And then we want to type plus floor, open brackets, xf dot angle divided by 90, close brackets. And what that floor expression is doing is moving the cube along by one whole unit for every 90 degrees of rotation. And that's how it's actually going to move across the floor rather than just rolling on its corners. And now, if we need to zoom out to see this, we've got our cube marching very nicely like that. So we want more than one cube, so we're going to add a 3D duplicate after that. Let's have eight copies, and we want a time offset. So let's go for something like a negative 30 there. And you can see now, oops, we've got tw 28 copies there. Let's go back down to eight just to keep it simple. You can see we've got this army of marching cubes. So essentially that's it. We could just do a little bit of styling of this. So let's maybe add a 3D camera to this merge. Let's right click here and then copy POV to camera. And then let's add a 3D renderer after that merge and take a look at it. We need obviously to turn on lighting, but we haven't really got any lights. So let's just add to this 3D merge a spotlight. Let's set it to so something like 10 on Y and maybe 4 on Z, negative 60 for the X rotation. And let's take a look at our renderer and turn on lighting. I'm going to stick with the software renderer and also turn on shadows. Let's come over to controls and change the cone angle for our spotlight. So we've got more of the cubes in the light and let's soften off the penumbra angle. So we've got something like this. We can animate our camera. So if we come to the camera, transform, open up the pivot, add an expression to the Z, pick whip the Z translation times negative one. Let's just move up on Y like that. And then we can animate our Y. So let's come to the first frame. Let's just choose to come from roughly here maybe. So keyframe that at around 70. Let's come to the end. Let's swivel around so we're looking at the retreating cubes like that. Let's come to the spline editor. Let's set, select that Y rotation. Select this first point. Shift S to smooth it. Select the last point. Shift S to smooth it. So now we've got that. We don't want to be looking at transparency in the background. So we can just drop in a background node and merge our renderer over the top of that. And our final result looks like this. So all pretty simple. And we can control it with our transform here. The speed, if you remember, we set it to five, but we could go to seven or something. That increases the gaps between the cubes, but they, they run faster. Just going to turn off the uh, shadows because they're slowing down the playback. You can see we've got the cubes running faster. We want them closer together. We can just adjust that time offset, negative 23 or something. So you see we've got full control over our army. And that's the advantage of having used all those expressions because everything is now sort of centrally controlled. Anyway, hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.